Our focus report today takes us to Spain. For six decades, the militant group ETA carried out a violent campaign of terror as they pushed for independence in the Basque country. Last week, though, the group announced that they had officially disbanded. The Spanish Prime Minister, Mariano Rajoy, said, that, said there is absolutely no room for impunity for ETA's crimes. The terrorism victims group is calling on authorities to get to the bottom urgently of many of these cold cases. Our team has sent this report. Jose Marie Mujica is one of 1,630 Basques who lost a parent to Etta's violence. His father, Fernando, was one of the most influential socialists in the Basque country. I guess. This is his grave. On the 6th of February 1996, he was murdered in front of his son. He was walking along the streets and they shot him in the back of his neck. Why? Because that's what terrorism is. The terrorism was about liquidating anyone who was against the totalitarian project. And my father was among the people who formed part of those leaders. 22 years later, Etta has said sorry to some victims in a letter. A half-hearted apology, says this lawyer, who wants life imprisonment for Etta murderers. Do you think the apology was worth anything? The gang is worthless. Nothing these people say is worth anything. I want to be very clear, the only thing that matters to me is the goal of justice, of fighting against impunity and the goal of truth. He sees bringing those who killed to justice a prerequisite for a normal society. But not all victims share this view. In this exhibition of photos recalling places where Etta carried out attacks, Meitsha Balassa advocates forgiveness. She met her husband's murderers in prison. I no longer feel hatred or fear. I prefer to know that the two people who killed my husband and who apologized to me are devastated. No one will be able to lift the burden they carry on their shoulders, neither me by giving my forgiveness nor by them being released back into society. They'll carry it with them until they die. I think we need to reach out to those who are repentant. If we don't, we'll lose them for good. La información en caliente pide paso en el inicio de esta edición porque hace poco más de media hora se ha registrado una explosión ante el cuartel de la Guardia Civil en la localidad barcelonesa de Vigna. During its 40 years of violence, ETA has killed more than 850 people, injured 2,600 and forced 100,000 Basques into exile. Despite the lives wrecked, some of the discourse in the Basque region is surprising. In some bars in the old town of San Sebastian, there's not much disowning of the violence. 300 ETA members are serving time in French and Spanish prisons. José Ángel is an independence activist. He considers them heroes. Those are four political prisoners who come from the neighborhoods. We all know them and this is a way of remembering them and telling them that we haven't forgotten them. When we mention the use of arms or the apology to the victims, the reaction is defensive. There are two sides in this conflict. No one can deny that. It makes absolutely no sense to ask for forgiveness from victims who were involved in the conflict. This is the end of an era. Everyone recognizes what they've done, but asking for forgiveness, that would be like getting down on our knees. And as far as I know, the Spanish government has never apologized for its crimes during and after Francoism. In a letter published in a Basque newspaper in April, Etta maintains this ambiguity. An apology, but one that makes a difference between legitimate targets and collateral damage. A distinction that's totally unacceptable to victims. We meet back up with José Marie in San Sebastian because the Terrorist Victims Association, Comité, is giving a conference to protest against Etta's charade as they see it. This is not the end of Etta that we wanted.
What we're asking for is that, first of all, we get to the bottom of the barbarous 358 murders that were never solved. That we drop a record of everything that's happened, because we know nothing about the 2,500 injured and whether they really got justice. We don't know the half of what has happened over all this time. We know nothing about the thousands of people who were extorted, threatened, all those who had to go into exile. For the victims, wiping the slate clean is out of the question until all letters' murders are resolved. Properly remembering the crimes of the last half century is the first step to a lasting peace.